we get introduced to the normal curve and something that is known as empirical rule. Empirical rule, also known as the 68-95-99.7 rule, which says that if you are under a normal curve, 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean. A standard deviation is a measure of distance. It's, you're measuring the distance from average. So if under a curve, if zero on this number line represents the average, if you're within one standard deviation, um, under a normal curve, 68% of the data should fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Um, 34 on each side, 34% um, above the mean and 34% below. A normal distribution is a type of symmetric curve. Not all symmetric curves are normal, but all normal curves should be symmetric. Um, then within two standard deviations of the mean, uh, we add an extra 13.5% of the data. Um, so that, that means that if you add up all the percentages, 95% of the data should fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And then finally, within three standard deviations should be pretty much all of the data because we add another 2.35%. So that means 99.7% of the data falls within uh, three standard deviations of the mean, either above or below. Um, you know, so on a, under a normal curve, you should only have about 0.3% at most of the data falling outside of three standard deviations. Um, the uh, a z value is just a more precise measurement of standard deviation. So we'll learn how to calculate a a z score, a z value, uh, by using a z table. But this just uh, you know instead of being like one standard deviation above the mean, maybe you can be 1.57. You could figure out each individual element of data where it falls relative to the mean. If you have a positive z value, that means you're above the mean. If you have a negative z value, you are below the mean. This is how a z value is calculated. We get the um, the data value x minus this is the symbol mu. It's a lowercase mu in the Greek alphabet. Mu starts with M, so think of that as the mean, and then you divide by the standard deviation in the set of data, which we learned how to calculate standard deviation by using um, online resources. Most of the time, um, they'll just give you the standard deviation. You won't have to calculate it. So the way that this z-table would be used, I have attached a z-table to your, um, to your cl online class notebook. So the way that you would use this, let's see if I can navigate around here, is uh, this tells you the area under the curve or what percentage of, of the data falls to where you're looking and below. And this is not working here. Why isn't this scrolling? Let's try here. Let's try doing this. Maybe this will help. Okay, so let's say that I'm measuring people's heights, and I um, I want to see what per. Let's say that um, I'm able to get a big enough sample where all the heights are normal, um, and I want to measure what percentage of people I'm taller than, and um, my height ended up being I, I want to I need to calculate the z so let's say my height ended up being uh 70 inches minus uh an average height of let's say the average height was uh 67 inches and there was a um a standard deviation in the set of data of um I don't know let's say 2.38 so I would use my calculator to calculate what the z value was for my height. My actual height is 70 inches, but I want to calculate what the z value is, so I would go 70 minus 67 divided by 2.38, and
and that gives me approximately uh, 1.26. So that's positive. So I'd want to go on my um, on my z table to the positive values. Uh, let's see how I can navigate this thing. No. All right. The uh, the left side of the table are the ne are the negative values, and the uh, the right side are the positives. So see how all these these are negatives. So on the uh, on the left side, the column going down it goes up to the tenth place, and across the top is the hundredth place. So if I have a 1.26, I would want to find up to the tenth place, which is 1.2, which is here 1.2, and then go across to the um, 0 0.06, because 1 1.2 plus 0 0.06 gives me 1.26. So if I look at the intersection where 1.2 meets up with 0 0.06, that gives me a percentage of 0 0.8962, or approximately around 90%. So I, I can say that my height, if this were the case, is roughly 90. Uh, I'm, I'm on the. Uh, my height is about bigger than the 90 percent of the, the rest of the population. If in in this scenario, if if these uh, if these statistics were correct, I just made these up. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm taller than 90 percent of the people uh, of the population, but um, that's that's how a Z table works. So if you want access to this, this is uh, available in the class notebook under forms. I suggest that you um, find it and even maybe print it out uh, so that you can carry it around with you. Okay, so this is uh, the Z table is used to calculate the area under the curve. It's also used to calculate probability. You can use it, you know, if instead of measuring heights, I was measuring the um, the chances of something happening, whatever I was measuring, you know, uh, there, there was a 90% chance that it would occur. The interest exam is designed so that scores are normally distributed. That's the key there. They're telling that there's a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 100. What percent of exam scores are between um, 200 and uh, 800? So we need to calculate the, um, the Z. And see what the Z score is. So um, first, let's do it with uh, with 200. So we do um, the 200 minus the mean of 500 divided by the standard deviation of 100, which is negative 300 uh, over 100, which is a a Z of negative three. Now, when they use these round numbers here, like even even though they don't tell you, I'm I'm kind of inclined to think that they want you to use empirical rule here, um, which is the um, the 95, um, 97, uh, 99 point seven rule. Um, so we'll try that one first, and then if not, then we'll use our, our Z table. Um, but Let's see. So that's that's the Z for that one. Now let's do a Z for the 800. So Z score for 800 minus 500 divided by 100 is um, equal to 300 over 100, and that's equal to three. So they want to know um, what percent of scores fall within negative uh, three standard deviations and three standard deviations. And we know from our empirical rule that that should be 99.7%. Um, So it looks like they did want us to use empirical rule here. I wish they would tell you that, though. A college entrance exam is designed so that scores are normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100 using the eight part. OK, so here, here's their way of saying to use, uh, to use empirical rule is uh, eight part symmetry of the area under a normal curve 
what is the probability that a randomly chosen exam score is above 700? So let's calculate the Z for 700. It's 700 minus the mean of 500 divided by the standard deviation of 100, which is uh, 200 over 100, which is um, which is 2. So they want to know on the uh, on a normal curve what is to the right, what percent is to the right of two standard deviations. Well, we know that to the right of um, of two, uh, we basically just have um, have two and a half. Let's let me draw that for you, just in case you're not looking at it. Let's see how well I draw. Something like that, where we have 34, 34. These are percents. Um, 13.5, 13.5. 2.35, 2.35, and then 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And uh, so 2.35 plus 0.15 is 2.5, so 2.5%. They don't have a percent there, so maybe they want us to put that as a decimal. Let's try it as a decimal, so that would be 0 0.025, yeah. Flight 202's arrival time is normally distributed with a mean arrival time of 3.30 and a standard deviation of 15 minutes. Use the eight-part symmetry, so in case they want us to use empirical rule again, to find the possibility that a randomly chosen flight arrival time is by 3.45. So by 3.45 means less than or equal to 3.45 before. So we want to the left. So the Z here would be 3.45 minus the uh, mean, which is... 3.30 over 15 minutes, which gives us 15 minutes divided by 15 minutes, which is which is 1. So they want us to know, they want us to state how much under the empirical uh, curve is, um, uh, under the, the normal curve of using empirical rules to the left of 1. Well, we know to the left of 0 is 50%. There's half to the left of 0. And then to get to 1 is 34, so that's going to be 84%. There is no percent sign, so they're going to want us to put that in as a decimal, so let's put in a 0 Suppose the scores of a test given to all juniors in a school district are normally distributed with a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of 9. Find the percent of all juniors who score is between 51 and 91. All right, so we've got to find, since it's in between, we have to find the score of the Z for both 51 and 91. Let's start off with 51. 51 minus the mean of 72 divided by the standard deviation of 9. That's going to be, uh, what, negative 21 over 9, which we're finally going to get a decimal, so we're going to have to round. This means we're going to use uh, the, the Z table on this one. So negative, to, we'll round to the nearest hundredth. 21 negative divided by 9 is around negative, negative um, 2.33. Um, negative 2.33 is the Z there. Now let's find the Z value that goes with 91. 91 minus 72 over 9 is uh, 19 over 9. And 19 divided by 9 is approximately 2.11. One, one. So now we want to find, if we think about a normal curve, we want to figure out what's to the left of negative 2.33. Figure out what's to the left, because that's that's what the um, the table gives you. They give you to the left, and if we subtract those two, 
from each other that's going to wipe out this overlap and give me just what's in between. So the percentage that goes with with negative uh, 2.33 on the table is... 0 0.0099, 0 0.0099, and I'm going to take that away from the bigger one, which goes with 2.11, positive 2.11 is 0.9862. Now, in my experience with this book, they expect you to use a graphing calculator instead of using the, uh, the table that I provided you, which gives you a little bit more exact. So... If they um, if they mark it wrong at first, maybe just try uh, fudging around with the decimals a little bit. It might be a rounding issue. Okay, so I'm getting when I subtract here the percentages is 0.9763, and uh, they don't tell you what to round to. So I'm gonna let's try 98% because they do have the percent sign here. Let's see, 98%. Convert a z-score to a standard and find the needed probability. They don't tell you what to round to, though. Let's see if I can look in the book and see at least what if they're rounding to a decimal. Uh, there is a percent sign. Well, let's just try maybe 97.63, putting it in exactly 97.63. Convert each score to a Z score and standard normal table to find the needed probability. 97. <sighs> Let's see. Okay, so it looks like they're not using percentages, so maybe maybe they just did 97 instead of 98. Okay, let's see. I'm out of retries, and so they wanted 97.14, which makes absolutely no sense. How do they get 97.14? Okay, so um, I don't know what to tell you. We'll, we'll uh, that's that's a rounding issue. So. We'll just uh, we'll try the best we can, and um, yeah, I wouldn't even know what to advise you there. I wouldn't even know. Let's try. Let's try another one. Suppose the scores on a test given to all juniors. In the school district are normally distributed with a mean of 77 and a standard deviation of 7. Uh, find the scores are at least 77. Okay, so at least 77 means greater than. So um, I want to find the percentage to the right. The table gives you the percentage to the left, so I'm going to have to use the complement. You'll see. I'll do that when I get there. So let's calculate the Z first for a score of, um, of 77. So 77. Oh, but the mean is 77. Oh, but that's an easy one. That would, that would just be 50 then. If the mean is 77, 77 minus 77 minus 77, doesn't matter what you're dividing by, it's going to be zero, and a z of zero is halfway. It's 50 percent. That's a pretty silly one. Yeah, they don't have a better one than that. All right, let's try this one. Suppose the scores of a test given to juniors, uh, m no more than 73. So not more than, so that means less than or equal, uh, to, less than or equal to 73. So let's find the Z for 73. 
minus uh, the mean is 73 again. It's going to be it's going to be 50 percent. Let's keep on trying problems until uh, I'm sure you guys won't mind. Those are pretty simple. Here, let's, uh, suppose that the scores on a test given to juniors in the school district are normally distributed. Scores between uh, 63 and 74. So let's do a Z first for 63. So 63 is the score minus 65 is the mean divided by the standard deviation of 5. At least the good thing is there we won't have to round because negative 2 divided by 5 is um, negative 0 0.4. And I'll go to the nearest hundredths so, so we can use the table. And then 74. To the other z, 74 minus 65, which is the mean divided by standard deviation of 5, is 9 divided by 5, and that's going to be exactly 1.80. So let's go look at the table and get those percentages. Negative 0 0.40 is 0 0.3446 minus. And then 1.80 is 0 0.9641, 0 0.9641, 0 0.9641 minus 0 0.3446. So I'm getting 0 0.6195. Again, they don't tell you where to round. There's no percentage here, so let's try to leave this uh, 0 0.6195. Hey, hey, all right, we got that one correct. <laughs>